Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. I am Amanda Rose, and today I have with me Kirsty Marie. How are you, Kirsty? I'm quite well, thank you. Still waking up a little bit, but that's all good. <laughs> we, we do like to do things early in the morning here, don't we? This is the time we're recording, just after 7 o'clock uh, this morning we're recording. Um, and of course, we're still in winter, and our winter seems to be uh, prolonging, getting colder as it's getting later in the winter. Uh, um, I always feel by the end of July it should be over, but uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. What did you think? Do you, do you think this year it's kind of gone on a little bit longer? It's colder, but it's actually quite beautiful. Like yesterday, the sun was amazing. Oh, mm. It was wonderful. We we had a picnic yesterday on the beach at, at lunchtime, mm. just lying in the sun there. And, um, <clears throat> and that's the thing. We're, no matter how we can complain about our winter, we still have sunny <laughs> days. Even if we had four or five last year only throughout winter, for me, that's what I felt. But um, yeah, Southern Hemisphere mm -hmm. winters, depending on where you are, can be pretty awesome. And we should have a full-blown winter because that means we have a great summer, is what I think. But anyway, mm. let's mm -hmm. carry on talking about what it is. <laughs> Tell everybody what it is we were, we're going to talk about today. So today we're doing our reflective chat um, about our <clears throat> sessions that we had for anybody who is neurodivergent. And... Uh, Part of the reason why we're doing it two weeks after the last one is that was the last one that we were doing like that on a Sunday morning. From here on, we're going to do something different. We're just doing one. We're just announcing one of the next thing that is different today. At the end of this, we will announce it. And then we see how we go because that is the intention. Our intention, And, and anyway, we probably could safely say we're going to do three and um, because it's all about relevance and time and, and time and space. Uh, what do you think, Kirsty? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, three three is a great number. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll yes. do the first one and we'll see what unfolds. But that's right. Yeah. So yeah, no, like... I think I think that's awesome. So um, yeah, I think that's the way to go, really. Um, so everybody, you know, thank you for coming to all of those sessions and making your comments and watching. Um. Kirsty, how did you feel about about them? And, and the one that I remember to mind, obviously, is the last one. But the middle one was quite profound as well. And so, uh, but you tell me what your thoughts are on it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so I suppose the overarching idea of the sessions was to really empower people who are sensitives, who are neurodivergent, to connect more to their own light and to reduce um, the overwhelm and start bringing through and expressing more some of the gifts they have. And and hopefully, um, you know, people experience some some benefits from going through that process, whether they watch one or, or all of them. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I have noticed for myself, actually, um, that I've been quite busy and and it's okay because I'm I'm also someone who's who's prone to overwhelm um and feeling like I need to retreat into a cave in the hills yeah. <laughs> which would be not which would be nice but of course modern life is and parenting means that that's not always practical mm -hmm. um so personally I do actually feel more resourced and like I can put out more energy so that's that's interesting mm. yeah that is interesting because you I thought <clears throat> I mean I thought you do amazingly well for somebody who can feel overwhelmed um you know and being a mother and homeschooling and mm. all of that so mm. I've, and I guess maybe those things help too right the homeschooling does help um because then you you are on your time because I know for me mm. being someone who is neurodivergent in that I'm dyslexic, but I also have trouble mining. Uh, I have trouble um, <clears throat> managing my time, big time. Mm -hmm. Big time, uh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> big time. <laughs> I, can't, I can't seem to manage a foot into the norms of the 24 hours here on the planet. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, like the last four or five years, whatever's been happening, you know, in the wider wor world all around us since whatever started the pandemic or whatever, it helped me to sort of come into my own space of acceptance of of the fact that I I I do not manage time very well and I must be okay with that. 
But I'll have to say that although <clears throat> the last five years have been leading me to this, it's only like in the last, say, two months, two, three months that I've started to recognize it and say it's all right to be like that and understand better why I sometimes take so long to do things or I've done something. And uh, I'm not a slow coach. It's just going like that, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And I need my, like, more than anything else, if I do meditation in the, more, in the morning or if I do yoga in the morning, that prolongs my, the, everything else then is is um, pushed ahead because I can't, I can only do the meditation at my pace. I can't do the meditation any other pace, you know. And that's what we're supposed to do anyway. If I take time to be me, then I mm -hmm. my my outside things managing the third dimensional worlds for me is is delayed. So you know, and then I start to panic about that. I get feel really mm -hmm. pressure. Then I'm in my head. I'm constantly beating up myself. Rose, why can't you be on time? What? Mm -hmm. But the last three, say say two months, and it's interesting because we've been doing it since we've been doing the uh, the sessions, right? I started to recognize more of myself and see understand oh, okay that's why that is happening be okay about it mm -hmm. it's all right don't mm -hmm. be constantly stressing out or beating yourself up in your mind you know yeah so. yeah I love that that self-awareness and self-compassion yeah and that's what a lot of people find <clears throat> beneficial when they initially think oh maybe I do fit this label or diagnosis so that's you know some people are like oh labels no not good but, you know, it depends how you're looking at it. If you look at it and go, oh, that's interesting. I understand more about myself and how I operate. Yeah. That can that can be really useful as long as you're not limiting yourself by it. Mm. And, and the other interesting thing is to be aware and work with it, which is different from using it as an excuse. <laughs> that's right. Do you know what I mean? Because some people are that's like, right. oh, yeah, everyone is ADHD now because it means they can just – get away with whatever and and that, that that can be a real thing there was this um uh youtube video that went kind of viral um people sharing it but then also people making fun of it it was this uh, quite young girl and she was kind of crying to the camera like you know I, I applied for this job and they wouldn't recognize they wouldn't they wouldn't accommodate my time blindness which is this thing where you lose track of time and you and, you know, and I, I do experience this, but, I, you know, on the flip side, it's like, well, if you're going to apply for a job which has specific hours, <clears throat> yes, that's what it is. And so rather than crying about not being accommodated, find other ways, go to be creative and create for yourself a life that works for you. So if you want to have your own hours, but really you kind of need your own business, for example. <laughs> <laughs> I um yeah, it's taken me a long time to realize that and to accept that because, you know, um, it's 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 kind of a shock to the system to realize, actually, I don't fit into the time, the timelines of this planet. Um, I like it took me a long time to say I can't do nine to five anymore, mm -hmm. you know, or like to be OK with it, because there's that pressure of you have to find work, Rose, because you have to live and mm -hmm. uh, and most jobs are nine to five. For me, I started to feel very much like sometime, like maybe 2015, where I couldn't be like in the corporate world. I just wasn't wanting to be in an office with all the office drama, right? Mm -hmm. And and that, that that was and and I I just I just abhorred going into the office. It just like it was cringing, and I would do everything to delay myself to go there. And so that's like that's more than just about you know, like time management, that that's about saying, I don't really want to be there, right? It doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fit. fit. It doesn't fit. And even when I thought, oh, it's probably this organization that I don't want to work for, then I go to another one that's looking wonderful. And then within a month, I'm like, oh, I don't want to be here, you know, that sort of thing. And so mm. I think it's just coming into, it's part of the, there's so much happening now. It's part of that ascension process and saying I'm over that. But also there's this stuff happening with us that, um, like, okay, I, I can't do the timeline anymore. And then starting to realize, okay, what is that? Is it my ascension process? Is it that I'm neurodivergent? What is it? And working with that. But I have to say the sessions for me really started to see, help me see me. You know, I know that we were doing this and bringing in light codes. The first one was bringing in light codes. And then we realized, hey, you know what? We need to come back and do another one. And, and, and that's when 
it almost like you were saying this, you used the word, hey, um, I think we we anchored in the light codes now, and now we need to support people through that, you know, that process of okay, how do I simulate that? What is next? And then I, and the third one was about coming into your purpose. So, you know, I just I felt like whilst we were doing it, we were the facilitators of it. We were also receiving in this time, which is awesome because you know it puts us on the same. <sighs> It puts us in this in in this environment of whilst whilst we're coordinating, we're also receiving because it's really up to the higher, the high the high vibrational energy. It's up to all of that that we are creating down, all of that coming down because of all the the energy that we are sort of coordinating here, the the create the environment we're creating here. So yeah, I just felt that was for me. That was my experience. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And so we're all we're all powerful creators and co-creators and much more so when we can be connected to yeah. our higher our higher selves and mm. and it's really a great time to be whatever you want to call it, neurodivergent out of the box because everything's shifting at the moment on the planet. Everything's yeah. shifting. It really is. Mm. yeah um I'm also finding like I'm I'm coming into contact more now with people who um are neurodivergent and then when just when I like I didn't didn't think, didn't think about it before but I've noticed now that this is becoming more my reality and a lot of these people don't know that we've done those sessions that I'm coming mm. into contact with and then it just sort of like okay and then I'm starting to recognize and the amazing thing about it is that these People that are that I've come across now, I've, there's about two or three people in the last month. They are highly intelligent, um, high vibrational, misunderstood it, you know, uh, and and sort of because of being in the third dimension, like you know, years ago or whatever, we're into started to t find outlets, like in terms of drugs and and whatever. And now I've come back to themselves and like, I'm like no longer on any influence can't be mm. under any influence. In fact, the body won't have it. The mind won't have any influence like medication yeah. or drugs, mm -hmm. uh, you know, abuse, like abuse of drugs or whatever, because I can't cope with it because it's like, this is the shift of that we are having with the light codes and the light coming down. That's been happening now since 2012. Right. It's saying, well, you have to be authentically yourself and whatever that is, is fine. You have to be real about it. We have to be real with who we are, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm just coming into, I just was amazed at some things that I heard from uh, these people about what they're doing, about what they understand also about like their galactic selves, you know, mm -hmm. that, how they were led to people to who would do an Akashic reading or or something like that. And I, and. Like some of the things they're saying, I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been saying that about myself too, like for so many years and and thinking, if somebody heard you, Rose, they think you're crazy. But um, hey, <laughs> I just believe we have to come to the forefront and be real about ourselves and be honest about what's coming to our mind and be accepting of ourselves before we have to, before anyone else accepts us or we expect anyone else to expect or accept who we are. We have to accept ourselves. Or who mm. we are, right? So, Cassie, like in particular with the sessions, because now we've done them, we've been away from them for like almost two weeks. Mm. Um, and I'm having to remember. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I remember very much the, um, for me, what was really profound. Like I, I, the first one was, oh, I, I just can't remember a lot of the first one. I have to go back and watch it to remember it. But the second one, I remember the Mercury dragons and the golden eyed dragon turning up, the woman standing on the top of the peak. And I was just like, even the language, the light language in that was different. Um, I don't know that, we did, I don't think we did a reflective chat after the first one, our second one, right? I'm not sure. I can't remember. We may have. Yeah. We may have. <laughs> yeah. So much is happening. But that really stuck out for me because it's only in that week that the Mercury Dragons had presented themselves, you know, and they were, and then that they turned up in that session. I I just felt it was so apt for communication because I think a lot of, 
a lot of things or a lot of the narrative about neurodiver anyone who's neurodivergent is distorted. It's not real. And I just thought it's amazing how they dragon those dragons turned up to say, okay, the first one was in front of the lady saying, hey, you are not alone. High vibrational being you are. And the one the, the Mercury dragons were behind the the, the lady saying, we are here to, to help and to clear that in to reinterpret anything that's misinterpreted. Mm. I thought that was just like, wow, that was amazing because that's the thing, right? A lot of it is lost in translation. A lot of it is covered in terms of one, one narrative fits all. And yet anybody who's neurodivergent is mm. not, is not programmed. Mm, yeah. And we're individuals and on that kind of, more 3D level, of course, a, a common theme of the neurodivergent experience is that you are misunderstood. Perhaps you are communicating in a very literal way and other people are offended, for example. Yeah. Or um, you have trouble communicating at all, which was the case with me for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I relied on kind of sarcasm <laughs> and... Um, okay <laughs> like catchphrases and this is when I was a lot younger I mean I just it was very difficult for me to um communicate in any authentic way that the words would be in me in my head they'd be in my heart and I just couldn't yeah get them out get them out there mm. um and so we're expanding now to this time of more heartfelt communication mm. and it's really incredible mm. yeah I think it's a really exciting time. And I was speaking to somebody this week who is neurodivergent, who said to me that they were very excited about the future. And I felt really positive. I felt really happy to hear that because I feel that <clears throat> I can't, I don't know anyone who is neurodivergent that has not had some kind of, I, I guess, um, <clears throat> kickback from life here on the planet you know and um <clears throat> mis misunderstood misdiagnosed undiagnosed whatever mm. but but also like what is diagnosis right because you diagnose but then like then we diagnose and medicate we that was all we ever thought about you know or, well well that was all that was ever thought about that's the that's the solution for it but in the last maybe 20 years or so, it started to change where people started, maybe, maybe I'll say not even 20, maybe because 20 is probably too much, but maybe the last 10 years, which is great because if you think about the last 10 years, it's post 2012, the last 10 years. And it says, isn't it interesting, post 2012, yes. when that, that everything started to change? That's right. And for example, my, my, my eldest child was born in 2013. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So it started to change and it's really changed. And like I said previously, I think it's, and I'm going to use these words because that's what we use in the, third, you know, from a third dimensional perspective. It's millennial parents that are the forerunners of this, that, that paid attention, that had to, there was like no way you couldn't, right? Um, I mean, I'll have to say ex-generation parents, there's, there's some of them that would have, but uh, mm -hmm. of course, there's some of them that would have, okay, but they would have been quite alone in that quest. If they said what we say these days, they would have been looked at as like, are you crazy? Are you finding excuses for your child's bad behavior? You know, that mm -hmm. sort of thing, right? But that, it's that's right. They would have had to kind of almost hide away and find find their little niche clip of people. Yes. Rather than being, yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah, out there. <laughs> and I have, I have a friend who is, she had a school that she she had she did homeschooling for her children and people found that quite unusual because you know we were in church together and they sort of implied that it was a christian concept to be homeschooling because didn't want your children to be contaminated with the sins of the mainstream but mm. that, that that was not how she why she was doing it she was doing it because she had she has <clears throat> four children and every one of them and an intolerance for something or the other, hypersensitivity to some for something or the other. But and then she had one uh, one of them who was 
who was dyslexic and 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 you know the other one had something else and so she just she homeschooled from from like year one all the way to year 13 mm. and then the the next thing that the children did was go to university but she had good reason and then she suddenly was asked by other people you know in the community hey could you school my child because <laughs> and so she said she had this little school at home that she was doing uh like you know obviously licensed or whatever to be able to do that health and safety and all that where mm. it was and and so you're right that's what would have been that's exactly what would have happened um for the next generation parent but coming back to the millennial parents you know i mean honestly honor to them for for listening for hearing for paying attention because there was no other way to do it and then <clears throat> come to realize that a lot of them themselves um you know they're more they're a, lo a lot of millennial parents themselves that are that are neurodivergent and um perhaps recognizing themselves re and realizing hey actually you know i i recognize myself in this and i know what i need and so i need to pay attention to it so it's really really good that this has happened because Ah, so many things happen through those sessions. One of the things I thought, are they the sleeping dragons? I know that sounds crazy. Uh, are the neurodivergent children, people, the sleeping dragons on the planet? Because they are the transformers. You know, mm -hmm. big mm -hmm. statements, but true though. They are transformers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. totally. Like sort of, mm, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like hu human alchemical portals, really. It's like, you know, the energy is yeah. pouring pouring through and coming through in different ways and i really loved that the um the merlin came up when you when you brought that in yeah um, and the and the sort of synchronicity of it because it aligned with i've been reading we finished now i was reading this book to my kids yes. and i think the author's th baron I, we can i can check that and it was called the lost years of merlin and it's oh, wow. he's he's kind of um tapped into that legend and added his own spin about you know what what was the early life of Merlin like where did he come from uh and it's just this really fascinating hero's journey sort of a thing where the child gets washed up on a beach he doesn't remember anything about his past and then or a series I don't want to ruin the story a series of events you know kind of Mm, negative events occur to him that he has to overcome and he goes to find out about his past um, and you know his abilities are suppressed initially because he has trauma associated with those abilities yeah, yeah. Um, and judgment so you know exactly what we're saying yes yes and then gradually he has to come into aligning with them and using them and using them this was the key, using them from a, a place of love rather than fear. And um, yeah, and he's different. And that's because he's Merlin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I just thought it was amazing all those cards that came out that day because it was like, yeah. what, eight cards. And uh, and I thought, okay, eight cards. Because I, I just went through the, the deck and, I was, and as I felt guided, took them out. And then... After I put it away, I thought, right, how many cards do I have now? Because it's a lot and now I'm going to have to show these cards. It was like eight cards. And and that was like, wow, maybe too much. But then I thought, you know, kind of apt, maybe alignment because we were in the lion's gate and, you know, mm. eight is the number. And so why not? Yeah. But you see, the th interesting thing about the cards was that, sorry, just a little bit cold. The interesting <laughs> thing about the cards was that they, you know, they was they were, they showed the king and the queen the high priest and the uh, Merlin is the high priest in that Oracle card deck and the mm -hmm. high priestess, you know, all of those people that um, are there to impact humanity, all of those people, but, and, and it's, <clears throat> I mean, the King, <clears throat> if you have the right, if the King has the, the right integrity, the or... integrity, the perspective yeah. of high vibration, mm. which King Arthur was meant to be meant to have had anyway. Right. And and if a king operates like that, um, then for the good of the people, because 
it doesn't have to be hierarchical. The, the, uh, the, the one who is in charge can choose how to ex how that plays out. You don't have to be the autocrat. You can be, I don't want to say Democrat because that's been smashed, but you know. <laughs> yeah, what does that mean anymore? Yeah, but you could be mm. that you could be that that king that uses all the strengths of his people and mm. supports them and ensures that food and 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 that everybody has good things. Everybody is eating well, living well, not just being the king that goes and says, I want your tax money. And I don't care whether you have food on your, uh, you know, for your family and yourself, mm. you know, that sort of thing. And so, and anyway, who knows, maybe kings have been distorted like that too. We don't even know what's true anymore in terms of what is historically coming through, right? Mm. But a king of high vibration was what Arthur was meant to be. And so, you know, um, that's it. And, you know, they say Avalon, uh, the, the kingdom of Avalon, it was a mess, it was a whatever. But what is it teaching us? What is the high vib vibrational thing that you can take away from it? And that Merlin, Merlin, Merlin being Merlin, I mean, how many mag magicians do we have here on the planet, hey, with people that are, are so amazing? And in and can do so many things that they you know yeah dragons mm. dragon riders dragon masters yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so yeah. Kirsty, Kirsty, anything else you want to say just after our reflective chat I hope we covered everything but I mean we'll we'll figure out if we need to say something else more and we because we're coming back obviously anything mm. else you want to say about the reflective chat before we just talk about what's coming up. Mm. No, I think I think that's the synopsis. It's kind of like awaken sleeping dragons, um, have compassion for yourself in the in the process because it doesn't happen overnight for most of us. And if it did, that would be a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a work in progress. And then the other really cute thing about this book we were reading was um the main character, the boy Merlin, he had this ache between his shoulder blades that was just always there and he didn't know why. And then he found out it was part of being from this mythical place and being kind of like a hybrid and that he'd lost his wings. Okay. So I feel like that's, you know, it's time to regain our wings, maybe not in the literal sense, but yeah. Mm, I think you've just mm. given me the name for the the book is not called Awakened Sleeping Dragons, is it? No, no. It's okay. Called the, it's called The Lost Years of Merlin. Oh, mm. sorry. Yeah, you you did say that. Mm. I was going to, because what I've just realized is that's what we're probably going to call the series, Awakened Awaken Sleeping Dragons. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 because I've I put a name on already when I'm, you know, setting up the, you know, setting it up in Eventbrite. But I mean, it's not finalized yet, but Awakened Sleeping Dragon session. Well, let's talk about those sessions then. What do you think mm. is going to happen in them? I tell it, or, or maybe we should say you, we should say what the sessions are before we say what is going to happen. So friends, yeah. what, we're, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing a, a, an event. The first one is, mean, is going to happen on the 25th of August. It's going to be as we were doing them at 7 a.m. in the morning, on the Sunday morning, that's the first one, we will be doing three of them and they will be one every month. So we're going to have for the next, like for including August, the next three, say next three months. So August 25th is the first one at 7 a.m. New Zealand Standard Time. And then we have one a month later. And what we'll do is announce the, the next one at the end of this each one that we've just finished, right? So on the 25th, at the end of it, we'll all, we'll tell you when the next one is. And it is for anybody who's neurodivergent, but it's also anybody who feels that they want to join us, mm -hmm. right? What awakening, awakening or awakened sleeping dragon, we want to, we, we'll call it that, that name because I think it's perfect for it. Mm -hmm. Because of the dragon energy that has come through the sessions, and because, you know, given everything that we we concluded with in the three in the last one, you know, Merlin and the dragon and 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 Avalon and the king and queen and all of that, I just feel that it's so apt to call it that. But we are inviting all of you to join us because 
I feel like it's time for us to come to do something in a, in a deeper level with people where they start to say, well, you know what, I resonate with that. And I'd like to go to that series uh, or, or to that. You don't have to go to all. You can go to one and see how you feel. And then go, and from there, decide whether you're going to the next one. Because we're going to bring in the light codes and the light language for you, for people to awaken to their dragon self in that. Okay. And I'm saying awaken to the dragon self, but you could awaken to many other things about yourself because we never just get the one thing, mm. something like that. Now, this is a paid event because we're just going to speak about it like that. It's something you will have to register for and we will be linking the or putting the link in the description box to this video where you can click on it and you can register for it. Okay. Now, we're using Eventbrite at this time because we're not quite ready to do it via our websites, but it's Eventbrite and, you know, you'll see the, the link. Now, the thing about it is that uh, the, the cost is $22, 22 New Zealand dollars. Now, you can work out what that is for you in your, um, in your currency if you are outside of New Zealand. We felt... It was good to do 22 New Zealand dollars because 22 New Zealand dollars is is a reasonable price for us, um, you know. And um, yeah, so Kirsty, say something about this. Sorry, because I'm going on about it. I've already told everybody why we're doing it and all that. So you, you no, can no. add. Yeah, that's mm. all good. Yeah. So obviously, yeah, we want it to be affordable and accessible, um, and we also want to, as Rose said, have the opportunity to really go deeper. And the idea is that it will it will evolve organically, but it will be specific to the people who are there. So um, there will be a group, but it will be quite personalized yeah. so that we can kind of yeah, yeah. really, really get into on an energetic level what's going on. Yeah. You know, yeah. What might need shifting and what what wants to come in. Yeah. And we'll but and we'll use our um, both of us will use our skills so there'll be light language I'll probably bring through some of the energetic techniques that I use as part of my um, energy work modality whatever feels like it's coherent and cohesive for that group mm. yes yes see that's the thing because uh, we have to tune into the group that's coming in even though we may not know them personally and so each one is probably going to be different. But again, that is really up to the person who is signing up for it, who's registering for it. And so what will happen is you'll register for it and you'll get a, a Zoom link. And then on in that, on that day in particular, we will then, you will click on the link, come into the meeting, and then we will go through, we will do, we will do the session with you. Now, you, we'll also record it so that we can send you the recording afterwards so that you have it, you know, um, later on. And then we'll mm -hmm. talk about whether we we put that recording up later on anyway for anybody who is um, wanting to access it later on. Now, be assured that uh, we are going to make sure that it is a meeting and a Zoom meeting, not a webinar, but we will make sure that you everything is private so that no one can see who's in there and you Kirsty and I will be the speakers and you will be working with us like you'll be listening and we'll be the ones on screen so you won't be but you'll be able to view it view the meeting okay so we will ensure that that happens with that meeting mm -hmm. okay yeah right anything else Kirsty? Mm -hmm. No, nothing specific. I just, um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing what comes through and, yeah, co-creating and going deep, going really deep. Mm. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Me too, me too. Um, and for whatever reason, it just feels like this is the right thing to be doing. This is the next step for us to be working with people who want to go deeper. And so, yeah, really looking forward to catching up with all of you um, at the time. And, you know, uh, we really look forward to taking this journey with you because, you know, I'm also taking the journey. Um, 
And uh, yeah, just get in touch if you feel like you really want to be in it. But hey, you know, might not be able to afford afford to pay for it. I'm going to say get in touch if that is the case. Okay. And then we'll work something out because I, I feel like if you feel really strongly that you want to be in that, but you know, you just can't be, uh, there is a thing of you can get the recording later, but you know, it's really up to you um, how you do it, but also just get in touch if you just feel you cannot afford it. Uh, you know, I will work something out with it or we will work something out about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so friends, thank you so much for watching. I know it's kind of, I feel like it, we've been a bit too quiet, but it's early for us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's been a lot, a lot of late nights and early mornings for me this week, uh, probably for you too, Kirsty. Uh, mm. But yeah, so we'll catch you next time, and I will come back and remind everyone about about this event. And we're so looking forward to seeing and meeting all of you. Yeah, yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, well. Bye bye. Take care. Oops. <laughs>